Good evening. Welcome to St. Bartholomew as we celebrate the seventh Sunday in Ordinary Time. If you are a guest with us with this us on this weekend, we bid you welcome and thank you for joining for you, us for Eucharist. We hope all of you have a worship aid and participate fully in our liturgy today. We remember in our prayers Maverick James Zangle, who is being baptized and welcomed into the Christian community on this weekend. Our opening hymn is found in the worship aid, diverse in culture, nation, race. We gather as a diverse people, and yet we gather one in the Lord. Let us stand, greet one another, and remain standing for the hymn. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, as we enter these sacred mysteries, let us do so by first calling to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you challenge us to move beyond our natural inclinations. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you confront us with provocative and challenging words. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to be people of unlimited love, mercy, and forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that always pondering spiritual things, we may carry out in both word and deed that which is pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. In those days, Saul went down to the, the desert of Ziph with 3,000 picked men of Israel to search for David in the desert of Ziph. So David and Abishi went among Saul's soldiers by night and found Saul lying asleep within the barricade with his spear thrust into the ground at his head and Abner and his men sleeping around him. Abishi whispered to David, God has delivered your enemy into your grasp this day. Let me nail him to the ground with one thrust of the spear. I will not need a second thrust. But David said to Abishi, Do not harm him, for who can lay hand on the Lord's anointed and remain unpunished? So David took the spear and the water jug from their place at Saul's head, and they got away without anyone seeing or knowing or awakening. All remained asleep, because the Lord had put them into a deep slumber. Going across to the opposite slope, David stood on a remote hilltop at a great distance from Abner, son of Ner, and the troops. He said, here is the king's spear. Let an attendant come over to get it. The Lord will reward each man for his justice and his faithfulness. Today the Lord delivered you into my grasp. I would not harm the Lord's anointed. The word of the Lord. Thanks. And great. 
gracious is our God, slow to anger, abounding in kindness. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being, the last Adam, a life-giving spirit. But the spiritual was not first, rather the natural and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, earthly, the second man from heaven. So as was the earthly one, so also are the earthly. And as is the heavenly one, so also are the heavenly. Just as we have been born the image of the earthly one, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly one. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, to you who hear I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you, to the person who strikes you on one cheek, offer the other one as well. And from the person who takes your cloak, do not withhold even your tunic. Give to everyone who asks of you, and from the one who takes what is yours, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. For if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. If you lend money to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is this to you? Even sinners lend to sinners and get back the same amount. But rather, love your enemies and do good to them and lend expecting nothing back. Then your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High. For he himself is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Stop judging and you will not be judged. Stop condemning and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and gifts will be given to you. A good measure, packed together, shaken down and overflowing, will be poured into your lap. For the measure with which you measure will in return be measured out to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise 
Well, before I begin today's homily, welcome back, Father John from Florida. You still have a little bit of a tan left. It hasn't totally faded into Minnesota pasty white. Um, we were well served by Father Cummers while you were gone, but it's nice to have our pastor back. So, welcome back. Um, so, love your enemies. You know, I uh, was driving wait a, to... Wait a second here. Wait a second. You welcome me back and then you say, love your enemies. Um, yeah, whatever. Love your enemies. No matter who they are. So I was driving to the Eden Prairie Mall on Tuesday to have coffee with Mike. Um, and I was saying to God, I was saying, okay, I haven't written this homily yet. Give me some examples. It's always nice to have examples of what you mean by turning the other cheek and loving your enemies. So I'm driving along, and I take the turn off of 494, and I'm going down Valley View Road toward the mall. And uh, there's this car, a uh, young guy in a truck, actually, two lanes ahead of me. And he just, all of a sudden, he roars, and he cuts right in front of me. I have to brake my car, you know, to avoid hitting him. And I'm just like going, well, you stupid jerk. Oh my God, I can't believe it. And I'm just really ticked off. So, guy goes on, and so I keep on driving, and I go back and I say, God, just, just please give me some example of what you mean. So now I'm driving into the mall, and if you know anything about one of the entrances of the mall, there's a T, and if you're driving into the mall, there's no stop sign, but there's a stop sign on either side. So I'm driving into the mall, I'm going to take a left, and here comes this young lady this time in a car. She, I can tell, is going to run the stop sign, runs right in front of me, I have to brake my car. She turns, and then she notices me, and she's, she's eating an ice cream cone. And she kind of smiles at me and goes, tips the ice cream cone at me, and I go, you stupid jerk. I can't believe you just did that. And I'm just like, ugh. I'm upset. And I'm, I'm upset for a few seconds. And then I parked the car and I said, God, give me an example of what you're talking about. And then I'm walking into Barnes and Noble and I go, oh, duh. I was a stupid jerk. Thank you, God, for showing me a little bit about what we need to talk about today. Because here's the thing, we all get angry, and God is not saying to us today, don't get angry. Angry is a response to hurt. We get hurt, and there's an instantaneous anger. We know Jesus got angry uh, at the money changers in the temple, right? We remember that. But Jesus is trying to actually do us a favor. He's not just teaching us real nice stuff, be nice to everybody. He's also saying, be nice to yourself. Because I'll tell you what, if you're angry at somebody, whether it be somebody, let's say your wife runs a vacuum cleaner during the Super Bowl and you're, you know, and you stay angry about that. Or, you know, your kid puts a dent in the car. Or you go to work and one of your colleagues bugs you or takes credit for something you do. Um, or maybe your priest gives you a hard time during a homily. You know, maybe you get angry, but what do you do with that? Do you stay there? Do you stay ticked off? And I have known people that have stayed ticked off all their lives for one incident, and they put a chain around their necks, and they become enslaved to their anger. And it's a hard thing. It's a terrible thing. It has broken up families. It has broken up countries. This holding on to anger. I work with people who are convicted of domestic assault. I can't tell you how many times I've heard a husband say, well, she made me do it. And I'm like, no. Nobody makes you do anything. You might have gotten angry because of something that had happened, but what you choose to do with that anger, whether or not you choose to hold on to that, that's on you, buddy. That's all on you. And who wants to be in that place anyway? Because have you ever been really angry and held on to that anger? Do you remember how you felt? Probably not very good. The happiest people I see in the world are the ones that keep away from those chains. And I was trying to think about those kind of people then as I was thinking about this homily. You know, you Google things like peaceful people, loving people, and of course the first person that comes up is our Lord Jesus Christ, who certainly pr practiced pacifism throughout his life. You come up with Gandhi, 
Martin Luther King, Mother Teresa. And you know, it's like, these are great names. We talk about them all the time. But then I come across a name, a little bit different. I want to tell you a story about this one. The name is Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Now, Father John probably knows a lot about this. I bet Todd Warner knows about Dietrich Bonhoeffer. I didn't know anything except maybe the name, and yeah, he was some guy that wrote a lot of stuff sometime. Learned a little bit more. Dietrich was uh, born in the 20th century, the beginning of the 20th century in Germany. He was born to a very rich family. His father was a psychiatrist, a colleague of Sigmund Freud's. Uh, his mother was one of the first women that actually attended college in Germany. Families full of uh, aristocrats, um, artists, uh, scientists, all kinds of wonderfully accomplished people. This is the creme de la creme of Germany, okay? And so Dietrich did not suffer for any lack of money. He showed uh, a talent for music, and his family thought, oh, you're going to become a musician. He was so good at playing the piano like Richard is. Um, but at the age of 14, he said no. This was a good Lutheran family, and he said, I feel called to serve in the church. And so despite the fact that his family just didn't think that was a great idea, he studied, and he learned about the church, and he learned about God. He was brilliant in his classes at his university stuff. He began writing. He, he showed people some of his great talent uh, in terms of his thoughts of the suffering Jesus. He would write a book called The Cost of Discipleship in 1937 where he talked about, and I love this, cheap grace versus costly grace. And he said, cheap grace is when you go to church and you think God's going to take care of everything. He's already forgiven me, so I don't have to do a gosh darn thing, but just enjoy all that grace. He said, costly grace is when you enter into a relationship with Jesus and you're willing to suffer as Jesus suffered for the sake of others. That's costly grace. He came to America and he studied here and again he wowed the people of New York, although he really liked going to a church in Harlem, an African American church. He fell in love with spirituals there because he saw how that was a sign of suffering and faith in suffering. So this man's star was climbing really high and he was only like 30. But at the same time his star grew. So did this evil dark thing that came out of Germany called Adolf Hitler. And Dietrich knew the kind of per person Adolf was. He knew what the Nazi party was saying. The German people were seeing Adolf as the new Messiah, somebody who was going to be the leader of their church. Two days after Hitler was appointed chancellor, Dietrich got on the radio and he began talking to people and saying, this is a bad idea. This is bad for our country. He was cut off in the middle of his talk. But he continued to fight against the Nazis, and he fought against this anti-Semitism. He came from a family that truly loved Jews. There's a story about how his 92-year-old grandma was going to go shopping at a Jewish store, and there were a bunch of Gestapo-type guys standing in front of the store, dissuading people from going in. She walked right through them saying, nobody is going to tell me where I can shop. This is the kind of family he had. So. Dietrich kept on getting shut down. He formed a community of like-minded people, but they were shut down by the Nazis over and over again. Their voices cut down. He lost positions at university, teaching positions. Um, and his friends worried about him. His friends in America said, Dietrich, come to New York. Come back here where it's safe, and he did. In 1939, he traveled to New York. He was here for two weeks. And then he went right back to Germany. He said, I can't leave my country. I can't watch from afar. And he said this. He said, for a German Christian to allow our country to win this battle will be to lose our civilization. To help this country lose its battle will be to preserve it. And so he became an enemy of the state. He joined the Abwehr, which was the military intelligence. They thought he was going to help their cause by subverting some of the other Christian ministers to follow in uh, their way of thinking. What he was doing instead is he was telling the Allies some of the atrocities that was going on in Nazi Germany, the, the concentration camps, the terrible plans Hitler had 
for the world, the conquest. He also used his position to spirit Jews out of the occupied countries into safe countries. He and his friends saved 1,000 people. He also became part of a conspiracy to kill Hitler, which was really difficult for him. He believed in peacefulness. He believed in the quality of life of every person, even Adolf Hitler. And yet he also realized that for Hitler to continue this way would cause even more millions to be killed. In 1943, he was arrested after rescuing 14 Jews and getting them to safety. He was placed in jail, and then the Nazis found out exactly what he'd been doing all this time, how he had been a double agent working with the underground. They found out about the conspiracy to kill Hitler. And so after two years of being in Buchenwald and other terrible prisons, Gestapo strongholds, he was sent to Flossenburg on April 8, 1945, three weeks before Hitler would kill himself. Now, here's the funny thing about Dietrich. Throughout all that time in those Nazi prisons, the Nazi guards loved him, and they would get him to minister to the other people in the prisons that were in trouble, and Dietrich would minister them. He believed in ecumenism. It didn't matter what you were, what faith you were. He was going to help you out. He was going to help teach you about God and talk with you and comfort you. And it was on April 8th when the Gestapo came to take him to Flossenburg. He was in the middle of a service, and they said he was teaching about the scripture reading, by his wounds we are healed. And he was preaching that to these prisoners, that the Gestapo, Gestapo came for him. As he was leaving, he said to an English prisoner, this is the end of my life, but the beginning of new life. The next day, Diedrich was hung, along with five other conspirators at Flossenburg. I want to read you what the Nazi doctor who oversaw the hanging said about Dietrich that day. Through the half-open door in one room of the huts, I saw Pastor Bonhoeffer kneeling on the floor, praying, praying fervently to his God. I was most deeply moved by the way this lovable man prayed, so devout and so certain that God heard his prayer. At the place of execution, he again said a short prayer and then climbed the steps to the gallows, brave and composed. His death ensued after a few seconds. In the almost 50 years that I have worked as a doctor, I have hardly ever seen a man die so entirely submissive to the will of God. We don't know where Dietrich was buried, if he was cremated, if he was just put into a mass grave, but his legacy has lived on now for the last 80 years. He is held in high esteem, called a holy martyr. Popes have spoken of him. Pope Francis and Pope Benedict have both quoted Dietrich in some of the writings that they have done, and he has certainly influenced the other Protestant faiths as well. But what I think is that even though he was a prisoner at the end, he was truly free. And he truly died a free man, free of hate, full of love, and always obedient to God. That is what Jesus is talking about today. So on Thursday, I went back to the Eden Prairie Mall. I don't remember any bad driving that day. Maybe I just didn't notice it because it really isn't that important after all. But I was thinking about this guy. And I was thinking about how we all weave chains in life. Chains of anger, chains of hate, chains of retribution. And I just think how it's the great paradox that when we submit to the will of God, then it is that we are truly free from those chains. My brothers and sisters, choose God. Choose love and be free. Amen.
we join our voices with those of the confessional churches during uh, Nazi-occupied uh, countries in World War II who confessed Christ as Lord and Savior by professing our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born to the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the for our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray now for the needs of the church, the world, and of this assembly. For Pope Francis, for Archbishop Bernard Hebda, for our pastor Father John, for all priests and deacons, and for all who lead the church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for a spirit of cooperation and honest dialogue among leaders of nations and those who serve at all levels of government. And we especially remember the conflict that's occurring at the Ukrainian border. We pray that there be peace here and not war. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families to seek to resolve long-lasting conflicts and alienation that have divided them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a spirit of reconciliation to transform our tendencies to condemn into attitudes of acceptance, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The outreach of the Catholic Services Appeal and the success of this year's campaign, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for all those who have died that they may be welcomed into everlasting light and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray too for those Christians and people of goodwill uh, who are existing, confessing Christ as Lord and Savior in places in communist countries, places that oppress Christianity. Pray for their safety, God's providential hand upon them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our Lord. prayer. O oh God, our Father, hear the prayers of your faithful people. Give us courage to put the words of today's gospel into practice. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. to 
My brothers and sisters, am I sacrifice in yours? May be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for us good and for all of the whole church. As we celebrate your mysteries, O Lord, with the observance that is your due, we humbly ask you that what we offer to the honor of your majesty may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O oh Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until
until you come again. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, Joseph, his auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. has no body now but yours, no hands but yours here on this earth. Yours is the work to serve with the joy of compassion. has no body now but yours, no hands but yours here on this earth. Yours is the work to serve with the joy of compassion. No hands but yours to heal the wounded world. No hands but yours to soothe all its suffering, no touch but yours to bind the broken hope of the people of God. Christ has no body now but yours, no hands but yours here on this earth. yours to see as Christ would see, to find the lost to gaze with compassion, no eyes but yours to glimpse the holy joy of the city of God. Christ has no body now but yours. No hands but yours here on this earth. Yours is the work to serve with the joy of compassion. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we may experience the effects of the salvation which is pledged to us by these mysteries through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As we be seated for a moment, there are a number of announcements. Next weekend is our annual Catholic Services Appeal, so please bring your wallet and or your checkbook. I'm serious. <laughs> Also, for those who are watching the Mass tonight or tomorrow morning, our drive-up communion on Sundays are still continuing from 12.45 to 1.15 p.m. for those who have watched our online Mass, the State of uh, Grace, 
prayed in our Father, and Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. You're welcome to come. I'll be there. Deacon has covered me for the last number of weekends, so thank you. Also, let's give him a round of applause. That was a beautiful homily. <laughs> Although I think he still implied that I was his enemy, but anyway. <laughs> Ash Wednesday is coming up. Can you believe it? It'll be a week from this Wednesday. Ash Wednesday, March 2nd. There'll be a number of masses. Mass at 9 a.m. with the imposition of ashes. 10.15 a.m. there'll be a Lenten retreat by myself and Susie Osako with a soup lunch after the retreat. 12 noon there'll be a Mass with ashes as well. Drive through with ashes and communion at 1.15 and 1.45. 6 p.m. another Mass with imposition of ashes with choir will be there. So there'll be a number of Masses that doesn't include the uh, school mass at 215, which is just for the school. Also, our journey through Lent will begin on uh, March 1st, so that's the day before Ash Wednesday. The deadline is fast approaching to register a journey through the Bible with Jeff Cavins. This eight-part course is the easiest way to understand the Bible, helping you to uncover the story woven through Scripture so that you and I can get a big picture of the Bible. There may even be a special appearance by Father Michael Schmitz of the popular Bible in a Year podcast. The deadline to register is this Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, February 22nd. For more information, pick up a flyer in the, in the holders by the welcome desk. Visit our website or call Sue Scott, who's right here at our parish office. And we really want to use this Bible in a Year to be the kind of the foundation for all of the Bible studies that come forward here at uh, St. Bart's. We're pleased to have St. Bart's be a satellite location, uh, a live streaming on those Tuesday nights, March 1st, for eight weeks, uh, really f uh, for the western suburbs. Also, I mentioned that uh, we are having an Ash Wednesday retreat. It will again be offered this year. The theme is Cast Out into the Deep, based on Luke chapter 5, verse 4. Susie Oseko and myself will be the presenters a light lunch, soup lunch will be served after. To sign up, please visit our website or grab a registration form in the holders by the welcome desk. So a lot of welcoming desk problem issues here. The retreat will be limited to 60 people, so make sure to receive your spot promptly. The deadline to register is February 28th or sooner if uh, spaces fill up. Also, I just wanted to make a reminder, talking about Dietrich Bonhoeffer, um, he, uh, Eric Metaxas wrote a rather lengthy book on Dietrich Bonhoeffer. I think it's about 500 pages, somewhere around there. Todd, do you know how many? Four or 500 pages, something like that. And uh, Eric Metaxas, his parents escaped communist uh, Greece and came to America, and he's a great author himself as well. And uh, just knowing so many people around the world that are still suffering under communism, oppressive regimes, continue to pray for them. I know that during World War II, my father was a tank commander, and his last uh, work in the Army, he served for the Americans, but not all American GIs could come home at the same time, so they brought them home in six-month increments. His duties were to bulldoze uh, bodies in concentration camps into mass graves. I remember watching World at War, the BBC documentaries on World War II, and you just essentially didn't ask a lot of questions. I just remember asking my dad one question. Dad, do you remember that? We were talking about a concentration camp, these piles of bodies. And all he said was, yes. I didn't ask anything else. People suffer greatly. They still suffer greatly today. So let us offer up prayers for them and for ourselves in our own sufferings so that all of us, by the graces that Christ won upon the cross for us, would be relieved and healed. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your lives. Thanks be to God.
真。